Hello everyone. Welcome to my seminar on learning styles. Um, this is a basically a seminar on how to maximize your learning and um, your retention of subject matter. Um, my name is Miranda Connolly. I am an ASC peer tutor. I'm also your student trustee and ASB president. Okay, so the first basic um, concept of the seminar is what are learning styles? So learning styles are, way, are ways in which um, we learn best and most comfortably. Um, the main learning styles are visual, auditory, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. These are the VARC learning styles. Um, next thing I want you guys to know is um, these styles are guidelines. They, they're just general patterns of which of ways that you prefer to take in information. And then you can definitely be multimodal. Most people are. Um, and also you may learn better with different styles depending on the subject matter. For example, um, if you're learning geography, you may learn visually better because you can see a map versus um, physics, you may learn more kinesthetically. You like to see things move and see things um, in a tactile way, right? Again, learning styles are, they're not a box, they're a trail, right? They're a preference. Um, they're in no ways strict guidelines that you have to follow every time. They're just your general patterns of learning best. Okay, so let's get right into it. Your first style is visual learning. So the characteristics of a visual learner is you prefer pictures and diagrams, um, you like charts and maps, you visualize pictures or ideas and concepts in your head. So in something that like, um, if I was to uh, try to spell a word, me, I would sound it out because I'm an auditory learner, but visual learners may actually picture the word in their head or maybe even picture the, the object that they're trying to spell. Um, so if you think of an apple, you may see an apple in your head instead of reading a word or hearing it in your head, right? Um, for you, it's easier to memorize pictures and symbols. Um, you like visual patterns. And um, again, like I said, think in pictures rather than words or voices. Um, and these are just general characteristics. Another way to think about it is um, if someone was to give you directions, you would rather see it on a map than have them visually or have them um, like audibly tell you or um, like show you with your hands, right? So some study tips for a visual learner is to draw out your diagrams or have others draw diagrams when they're explaining something to you. Color code like crazy. Visually draw your eye to your notes. Um, the best way to color code is to take notes normally and then go through and um, highlight things. That way you're actually going through your notes again and it's not um, tedious while you're actually taking notes. Um, associate terms with images. So if you have a list of um, uh, vocab words that you have to memorize, associate those terms with um, with an image, right? And ways to memorize it and how to spell it. Um, visually look at how you spell at how you spell things or things like that. Find patterns. Again, anytime you're trying to memorize something, um, look at visual patterns. Uh, so if you're trying to memorize a sequence of um, I don't know characters you can look at the visually and look at the visual pattern, right? Watch lecture videos and demonstrations always. Always include a visual component to your learning. Um, so if, you know, when in doubt, look at a YouTube video. Um, look at diagrams online. Uh, find things that are visual to you, right? Again, find visuals in your textbooks and study those instead. Um, uh, instead of looking at blocks of text, maybe you like pictures, right? Um, picture books are actually pretty useful. <laughs> um, and then next is to use visual mnemonic devices. So mnemonic devices are basically just memorizing techniques. They're um, association, they're brain associations. That's, it's just a device to associate things and that way it's easier to memorize. So visual mnemonic device could be, um, so let's say you're in chemistry and you have to memorize the, uh, uh, the element symbol for tin, like, which is SN and then memorize what that symbol corresponds to, which is obviously 10. So visually, the symbol SN is SN, right, written out, and then um, TIN is T-I-N, spelled out visually. So SIN and TIN look really familiar if you look at them on paper, right? That's how you can associate those together. You can visually see it in your head, right? Yeah, so that's a visual mnemonic device. The next style is auditory. So um, character the characteristics of an auditory learner are you prefer audio stimuli, so think music, lectures, audiobooks, those kind of things. 
um, podcasts, and then audio lectures, of course. Um, anything that has an auditory component. You actually like probably, maybe you mutter to yourself when you read out loud, or maybe you physically like to read things out loud. And that has how you can, um, you uh, just understand them better, right? Uh, you're, this is a me thing, but um, fidgeting might be a noise. So tapping or clicking, I click my pen all the time and it drives people nuts. Or I tap or I do things like that. Um, that is an audio thing, that's an audio stimuli. So some study tips for an auditory learner is talking through concepts with other people, <laughs> uh, whether it be professors, study groups, anything like that. Talking and hearing yourself talk or hearing other people talk, it just makes it um, cement even more um, deeply in your head, right? Read your notes out loud. Again, the concept of hearing it, hearing it and processing it that way. Teach others. So this actually is something that um, all learning styles should do, but it's scientifically proven that people learn best by teaching others the concept. Even if you don't really understand it that much, talking it through with somebody else and trying to teach them the concept is really helpful. Uh, again, same kind of concept, repeat flashcards. So if you make flashcards audibly um, and do, um, if you have like a Quizlet flashcard, um, have them repeat it back to you audibly. Um, have the Quizlet lady repeat it back to you, right? Again, use audiobooks whenever possible. Um, I took a psychology class and the audio textbook saved my life. <laughs> um, talk with teachers and students. Like I said, always talk through your concepts with other people. It really helps to hear it in your head and hear it being said out loud. And then this works for some people. Sometimes it doesn't, but try instrumental music to keep focused. I love piano music. So piano instrumental music is super helpful for me. Um, you can also try regular music, but I sometimes find I get lost in the lyrics and I forget what I'm focusing on. So try instrumental music to keep you focused and drown out any other auditory stimuli. Um, again, and then use auditory mnemonic devices. So let's go back to the example of um, the elemental sign for tin. Um, you're going to say um, SN kind of sounds like sin when you look at it, like SN, sin, sin, sin rhymes with tin. So that's an auditory mnemonic device. So yeah. Okay, next up is reading and writing. So this is a style, um, your characteristics if you are a reading and writing learner, you like to read, <laughs> surprising. You uh, write things down to remember things. You maybe write words in your head. So if you're trying to spell something, you might physically say, okay, apple, A-P-P-L-E, and write it out in your head, or you write it with your finger, right? Um, you prefer written directions, so if somebody was to say how to go to the supermarket, you want it written down. Go left at the stop sign, go bloody bloody blah, 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 right? Written directions. And then again, you prefer written instructions. So if a, if a teacher gives you an assignment, you want a handout, right? Um, and then again, written descriptions of things always. So if maybe um, if you like watch a movie, maybe you like to see the um, subtitles. Maybe you like that, right? Um, and then you write to formulate your thoughts. So a lot of people do this, but um, it also can be uh, indicative of how you um, how you like to learn, right? If you um, are trying to conceptualize an essay, right? Maybe you like to write out your thesis and write out your your um, your support your points to support it, and that way it helps you formulate your thoughts, right? So some study tips for a reading and writing learner is to take detailed, neat notes when, re when you're reading along with something, right? Take advantage of handouts and written resources that your instructor gives you. Don't throw them away, use them because that's how you learn, right? Write out descriptions to visuals. So if, an, if a math teacher gives you a pie chart, maybe you can write it out like as if you were annotating it to say like, okay, um, the yellow section of the pie graph is 50%, right? Write it out, write out descriptions to visuals. Reread what you've already written and then reread your notes. So that con that um, combination of reading what you have written, reading and writing is the best way to cement um, this kind of learning, right? Use flashcards because the act of writing flashcards and reading them to yourself is just all of your different um, components of a reading and writing style in one right? Also, just a note, all learning styles can benefit from writing out flashcards because writing is not only a writing style, 
but it's also kinesthetic, which I'll get to in a second. But it, the act of writing helps it ingrain in your brain as well. Um, and again, write out your mnemonic devices. So if, again, let's do, let's keep the elemental um, memorizing, right? SN is a symbol for tin. Um, write it out. SN looks like sin, like do an arrow, and then looks like tin, right? Um, write out your mnemonic devices. Okay, and next, last but not least, well, not really last, but we'll get to that, um, is kinesthetic. So kinesthetic, um, you are physically, maybe if you're a kinesthetic learner, you are physically active often. This is not always the case, but a lot of the times it is. Athletes are often kinesthetic learners. Uh, athletes and dancers, of course. So um, you prefer hands-on activities. Maybe you, you enjoy tactile experiences. So, you know, you like to go out and do things. You like to feel the sand in your hands, not just read a description about it, right? Which is kind of true of a lot of things, but this is especially true for kinesthetic learners. Um, you learn by doing. So you learn by trial and error and practicing and just doing it yourself, right? DIY. So you also might find regular studying really dull, which a lot of people do, but they're often kinesthetic learners because you have to be doing it to actually learn it. Um, you might be fidgety and distracted while reading, listening, or watching lectures. Again, um, a lot of people like this, especially when they're young or like this, um, but that's just maybe because you're learning in a kinesthetic way, right? So some study skills for kinesthetic learners, take advantage of models and lab settings when in doubt, always. Um, if there is a time in ke chemistry where you have the model sets and you can build the molecules and see the bonds physically in front of you, it totally is, is really helpful for you. Um, try doing a physical activity while studying. So I have a small story time. I was tutoring students in high school um, tutoring them in Spanish and they were they were athletes and they were having a pretty hard time getting these couple words down and I kept asking them aud audibly and repeating them repeating it to them but it just was not sticking to them right then I had them get up and do jumping jacks and I fired off the questions at them and they got it within one or two times so I don't care if you're pacing around walking on the treadmill and reading your notes or please don't fall <laughs> and please don't do that if it's dangerous, but try pacing around and reading your notes to yourself or um, standing up while you, while you attend a lecture and so that way you can move your feet, right? Do something active while you're studying. Take notes. Again, this is kind of, it seems like it would be a reading and writing, but like I said, the actual physical act of taking notes is an action and it helps cement it in your brain. Um, <clears throat> Teach others. Again, like I said, all learning styles can benefit from this, but teaching others is really the best way to learn by doing, right? You're, you're acting out and you're doing the, doing what the concept and you're teaching the concept. You're also doing it, right? You're learning by doing. So this is an interesting one, but role play. So if you have a concept in chemistry that you have to memorize, like let's say you're memorizing um, how covalent bonds form or, right, how covalent bonds form you can have another person with you and you can be, okay, you are, um, I don't know, you're two hydrogen atoms, right? And I'm an oxygen atom. We're going to link arms, right? And now we're going to be in a covalent bond because we're sharing our electrons, right? So you can role play that concept and kind of visually and um, kinesthetically see what's happening. Another way, again, that also helps with moving your hands and acting it out, right? The next is explore and experiment. And honestly, everybody should do this. This is not something just for kindergartners or young kids to, to work with. Everybody when they're learning should explore their environment and experiment with things because that's how we learn and how we discover new things, right? The only way that science, that science advances is by experimenting and trying new things. And that's how we learn, right? That's how we as a species learn. So Next is practice problems and use examples. Again, when in, you can just do it and practice it, that is how you're going to learn. Um, and finally, you can act out your mnemonic devices and key terms. Um, associate actions and associate some actions with those, right? So let's say if you're trying to memorize certain elements on the periodic table, you can think of argon, I don't know, R, right? The symbol for argon is AR, which looks like arg, like a pirate, argon. And you can make the motions in your head, right? 
um, just associate actions with words and that'll help you as well. Maybe make a dance routine. I don't know. Um, I memorize songs inst almost instantly and then I, I lose them as soon as they lose their tune. So it's just whatever works for you, right? Just try to find things that help you memorize. And finally, which is, this is the most common learning style, and this is multimodal. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You combine many different modes of learning at once. I'm a multimodal learner. Um, many people learn a certain subject better in one style, and then another subject in another. Like I said with the geography versus math, let's say. Um, geography is best, visual, is best visually represented on a map. And then math could be combining blocks or looking at graphs physically in front of you, right? It's, there's definitely um, many modes at once that, can, that people learn from. So, and many people prefer to combine and inter interact with different kinds of stimuli, like I said. So taking notes while listening and watching a demonstration, right? So if you're watching a lecture, you're combining the visual aspect of looking at an equation on a table while also hearing what the professor is saying, right? You're combining and then writing it down which is three different, um, three different methods of learning all in one, and that's the best way to learn. Again, another example is reading along with an audiobook and taking notes, right? It is actively reading. So, and then a lot of people do this, and a lot of people prefer to do that, right? Study tips for a multimodal learner. Actually, should be all learners, but it's okay. <laughs> actively engage as much as possible, right? When in doubt, when you can combine three, four different learning styles at once, do it. Um, so take notes while reading and list while reading or listening and or and or doing both. I like to read and listen to the audiobook at the same time because that's the best way that I learn, right? Use mnemonic devices in dominant preferring preferred learning styles, but then copy them down in a different style. So if your dominant style is auditory, right? Um, then copy so for me, when I'm memorizing um, the elemental symbols, sin and tin, to me, SN sounds like, when you when I read it out loud, sounds like sin, and then rhymes with tin. So that's my auditory mnemonic device, correct? So, but then I can write that down. I can say SN, arrow, sin, arrow, tin, right? Or I can act it out in some way. So again, Think of mnemonic devices in your dominant preferred learning styles, but then copy them down in different styles. When in doubt, engage in as many ways as possible. So experiment and find your method. These learning styles and tips are not a one size fits all. You have to find it yourself and you have to figure out what, what works best for you. It's hard and it takes patience, but I promise you, you can do it. And then don't be afraid to look at the subject um, through many different modes, right? Don't be, don't be boxed in by your learning style. Um, look at it from many different ways. That's the best way to conceptualize it and get the um, most perspectives. And then again, like all the other ones, teach others when you can. It really helps. It's incredible being a tutor because I get to learn the subject all over again. And it really cements it in my head. So and then I can teach it even better next time, right? Okay, so here is a quick wrap up. Um, I have the link to the VAR questionnaire, which because this is a recording, I can include in the description of the video. Um, this is a, just a quick questionnaire. I think it's 16 or 17 questions on um, to determine what your learning style is. And it's really cool. Um, I am multimodal. My dominant is auditory. And then my, um, my less but still dominant is kinesthetic. So what you know, right? It's a great assessment, and that's what I based off based my um, learning styles off of this questionnaire. Okay, so next is a final little resource for success, right? So um, these seminars are done through the um, Academic Success, success Center, the ASC at College of the Siskiyous. We are available online Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then we'll we are available in person on the Weed campus, Monday, Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesday, Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. There's a quick link for the ASC staff and peer tutors, which will also be included in the description. Um, and then I'm a tutor, so my tutoring office hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 2 to 5 p.m., and Tuesdays from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. Um, that is for... Uh, 
the semester of fall 2021. And then I have my Zoom link here, which again, um, may or may not be included in the uh, description of the video, but you can find it on the ASC Touring homepage within the, and within the ASC Canvas shell. Okay, so next I have a QA and a um, section right here. You can drop in on my tutoring office hours. You can ask anybody else. You can ask um, the front desk people at the ASC. Anything you, anything you need concerning your learning styles or anything like that or study tips, come see the Academic Success, Success Center resources because we're here for help. We're here for your success. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching and attending if you attended any of my seminars live and have a wonderful week. You got this and have a wonderful semester and I believe in you.